Hey, Dominic, the CX guy here. Nice to see you again. Another day, another lesson. So quick intro about me. I'm a Zendesk consultant with eight years of experience. I've been a Zendesk partner for the past two years. I recently completed a subcontracting agreement with Zendesk where I helped with the recent surge in projects. And I'm here to share some of that knowledge. So today, in today's lesson, I hopefully the audio is going to be a little bit better than in my previous videos. Um, I'd like to go over some limitations that I just ran into today, and I thought I'd share this information with you. So if you come across the same type of scenario, you, you know what to do, or you know what the problem is. Um, in short, I'm trying to use the Zendesk API to create tickets. So I'm working with a client, they use the uh, Zendesk API to create tickets inside Zendesk, and uh, this is how they want to work tickets. Um, they also have a very tight SLA, so service level agreement with their clients and they have like a very snappy type of approach they need to offer support within 15 minutes of a request coming into the system so um, we use this uh, script or their script to create tickets and they end up in zendesk so we kept running tests and uh, we saw that uh, slas were not being applied to the tickets coming in from the api so then I did a bunch of research and then uh, finally found the solution. And it was right there in front of my eyes. Namely, the uh, requester of that ticket was an agent, uh, namely actually a, uh, an administrator. And the tickets, hence, were not receiving an SLA. Why Zendesk does this is because uh, by default, Zendesk does not consider a ticket to be worthy of SLAs or does not apply SLAs rather. To, uh, to tickets that have a requester as an agent. And why it does that is because it considers that uh, SLA should be um, applied only to tickets that come from clients, not from uh, staff members, right? So we, we ran a bunch of tests and actually I did. And then I changed the requester to someone being, uh, being an end user. And then the SLAs started getting applied very easily. And yeah, so problem solved. I am going to, um, I'm going to, yeah, uh, I wanted to share this lesson because sometimes uh, it is a pain in the ass and you don't know how to find some, uh, yeah, something which is kind of obvious unless you hit your head against it. So this is one of the main reasons why the SLAs don't work on tickets. I was trying to find different workarounds, but that wasn't the case. It was just, uh, it was much simpler. Another reason, for example, why the SLA won't be running is because the ticket doesn't have a priority assigned to it. As you know, SLAs work based on uh, ticket statuses and ticket priorities, um, mainly with ticket priorities. So if a ticket's uh, priority is either bumped uh, to, mm, to high priority or urgent, they, it gets a more urgent SLA. If it gets downgraded in priority, then the SLA changes to something a little bit more um, relaxed, let's say. Um, another reason why it, it won't work is because um, uh, they don't have um, an active target applied, for example, tickets. They, maybe if you, for example, created tickets in the past and you activate the SLA today, it doesn't apply to tickets created in the past. So be mindful of that. If the ticket has private comments as well, it, it won't get SLAs because um, a private comment sent us things that that's a ticket which needs to be worked on internally a little bit and uh, only after the first public reply does the SLA start kicking in. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be sharing how to, uh, it's just a tool, I will share it in the comments as well, like in the description of this video, how the API um, command looks like to create a ticket. Let me share my screen real quick. So I have it in here inside a, yeah, this is what it looks like. If you're not very technical, no worries. I can just paste this over for you. Uh, you'll find it in the description of this video and you can just copy it. Um, so let's just go over the logic like what you would like to, you would need to change in this in order to make it work. So you'd need to do add in your dump subdomain in here, whatever that may be, .zendis.com. Then you just leave this as it is, copy it. So you have the requester ID. The ID has to be of a requester that you know within your system. So in your system, you go to a user profile and in the URL, you're going to see that uh, there is a this kind of a digit which you copy and you paste in your code. And then whatever, subject of the, 
of the email is going to of the ticket is going to be this the comment or the description is going to be this right whatever that is and then you have to here you have to add in your um, login details you have to add your whatever your email is it has to be an administrator uh, at company and then slash token and this is an api token which uh, if you don't want to use api tokens you can just use uh, your credentials like uh, basic authorization with email and password and the password is just uh, type in the password here and that's it you're done uh, you just uh, use this in your terminal or whatever and you'll be able to create uh, and run this test so yeah, this is today's lesson. Uh, hopefully someone geeky as I am is out there and uh, maybe runs into this kind of ran into this kind of issue. So uh, hopefully this helps you. If you want to see some special content, go ahead and uh, leave me a message. Ask me if you want to ask me questions or request uh, if you want to see any any videos, I'd be happy to to adjust. Um, I don't know necessarily what I'm going to be talking about when I wake up that morning. So it just comes up as, uh, as I ra run into issues like this one. And every day is a new challenge. And I want to document these uh, in a selfish way. I'm doing this so I can remember in the future <laughs> how to do these things. So yeah, hopefully you also benefit. Like and subscribe or just subscribe. That'd be helping me a lot. So thanks. See you next time.